friends, welcome back to my little show about motorsports and stuff. I like to call in the pits with me, Stock Car Scott, here on the YouTube during the racing season when I feel like it. Well, long time no see, folks. Uh, with three days of summer showdown, the uh, West Roads Firecracker 126 and another night of super late models racing at South South Speedway, along with trying to get some other stuff done around the house here, I have been a little busy. But I have been loving all of this local racing, but I hate that I miss the rebirth of late model racing at Yakima Speedway on the 7th. Last month ended with trying to get to see the summer showdown at Evergreen Speedway in the middle of the Western Washington rainy weather convergence zone. Well, Friday night was fine with the uh, mini stocks and legends and the three uh, super late model qualifying heat races. They were all able to get in all of their laps. And while I'm talking about Friday night, I would like to give a big old shout out and thank you to the lady at the uh, ticket counter who gave me a great discount just for being a, a fan. Saturday, I returned to Evergreen Speedway for day two of Summer Showdown, but only saw Legends and the Street Stocks bravely run in the rain. The night was mercifully called early. They rescheduled the big 200 lap super late model event for Sunday appropriately enough during a car show that had been originally scheduled for the fairgrounds there. So I got to see an action-packed race and check out some really sweet collector and customized cars. Preston Peltier of Colorado won the big race again this year becoming the first repeat winner in the seven years of the big summer racing event. While on Evergreen, I want to correct something that I said uh, in an earlier episode of In the Pits with me, Stock Car Scott, about a Northwest Champions night um, at, the, at the track last month. Well, I went and it didn't, it didn't happen um, to my embarrassment. Well, that is actually at the end of this month. Uh, Saturday the 28th during the Central Welding 125 Northwest Super Late Model Series and Speedway Chevrolet Super Late Model Combine event featuring several past champions scheduled to not only attend but to participate in the race. I'm understanding that Gary Lewis is uh, getting a car ready and I am stoked. There will also be a competition for the best throwback paint scheme on the cars in the race. That should really be a lot of fun of uh, local racing history. Meanwhile, this coming weekend, one of the most important racing events in the Northwest is happening in Kalispell, Montana with the Montana 200. Some really big names will be there, including recent two-time showdown, summer showdown champion Preston Peltier, as well as California's Jeremy Doss. Uh, while just a little closer to home, a little bit closer, the West Coast Late Models will be running another one of their exciting 100 lap features at Hermiston Raceway for their sixth event of the season. You know, I'd really like to uh, be able to go to see that one to see if uh, Garrett Huffines can make it 3-4-3 three three at Hermiston Speedway. I understand Terry Bridges of Northwest Race Report will be there streaming live, so maybe I can console myself by watching that instead. If not, I can always catch up with uh, what has happened there at Hermiston by watching Late Model Mondays on uh, the Facebook broadcast of Northwest Race Report, which comes on Monday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. And speaking of Northwest Race Report, I ran into Jeff Loader Eden at South Sound Speedway this past weekend as we both enjoyed the Super Late Models. And speaking of South Sound Speedway, they are having the Big Rig 
races uh, as their feature event this weekend if you do not care to travel to the Far East. Now, South Sound Speedway, you may have noticed by all the new videos on my YouTube channel here, is where I have been watching super late model racing over the past few weeks, starting with the big West Roads Firecracker 126 on Independence Day Eve, won again by Chad Hinkle. The crowd that evening was huge, and the race fans got a great show with lots of hard racing between recent new first-time winner uh, Tristan Heider <coughs> and ultimate winner Chad Hinkle. Then this past weekend Tristan Heider had to push his number 24 hard again to finish second again after uh, setting fast time earlier in the evening but the night belonged to Tommy Elstone Longtime South Sound Speedway competitor who started out the evening by winning the Super Late Model Trophy Dash. Then he hung on to a car with brakes failing late in the race to win the 100 lap Super Late Model feature event for his first victory in seven years. I was very happy for Tommy. I pushed my little car out a little bit further for today's show. And I was very happy wearing my Tommy L. Stone racing t-shirt there because I had never seen him win in all my years of going to South Sound, which isn't too many. Hopefully, uh, Tommy's win, like uh, Tristan's win last month, will lead to many more feature wins in the future. And a shout-out goes to uh, Tristan on his second-place finish where Late in the race, he spun himself in turn three to prevent his number 24 car from hitting the number 33 of Brooke Schimmel, with whom Hyder had been cleanly racing for many, many laps. Even after doing the right thing, Tristan was able to work back up to a second place finish during the last segment of the 100 lap feature. That fella sure knows how to run at South Sound Speedway, and, and when he learns to stay out of trouble and not have to restart uh, at the back two or three times per race, the wins should just start adding up for the one-time Lexar Holmes Legends legend. And speaking of legend legends, uh, Devin West put it to the legend field again this uh, sat last Saturday. Uh, Devin told me after the race that... Uh, his next move is onto the dirt with a bigger car. So good luck, Devin, in all your endeavors. I don't doubt that he will find success in whatever form of racing he chooses to become involved. In the other two 25-lap mains for the evening, Brad Crawford won again in the Baby Grands and in the Foreign Sports Car Racing Association Super 4 late model main, John Grosvenor won again uh, this season in his Chevrolet Impala with a Ford four-cylinder engine. Impalas are as assembled in Ontario, so I guess that makes them foreign. Like I said before, South South Speedway has big rigs this weekend, uh, late models uh, the following weekend, and then the big uh, Miller 200 there the first weekend in August. South sounds sounds like a lot of fun to, uh, for me at a track where you can go for the great food and then stay for the great racing. Oh, let me give me a drink here. <sighs> okay, let's see. With all this uh, local racing talk, I've almost forgotten uh, the big boys. Don't worry. I have still been watching uh, NASCAR racing, although mostly uh, recorded instead of live. Though I did see the July 7th uh, Daytona 400 live, and that was fun. 
I'm just glad I don't have to pay for all those cars like I would if I pretended to be Ricky Stenhouse Jr. out there on Interstate 5 in the old Dale Jr. Monte Carlo. And it was nice to see a, a new winner in the Cup Series uh, with Eric Jones, but, you know, I would have much rather if it would have been Bubba Wallace. Oh, also, it pleases me not that the last four cup races have been won using those devil cars. And Camaro has only won the first race of the season. Yep, just the Daytona 500, which is nice. But the remainder of the cup races, uh, all the wins are either by Fords or those devil cars. But I'll keep watching, hoping Austin, Bubba, or Larson or even Jimmy in his waning years can give the new Camaro a few more wins in its debut season in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. And speaking of new cars in NASCAR, maybe somebody at the Devil Car Company was listening to old stock car Scott a few episodes back when he suggested they introduce a sports type car to run there against the uh, NASCAR, against the more in line with the Camaros and soon the, the Mustangs uh, that are raced in the Premier Series and now in Xfinity. Well, hopefully to that end, as Ford did by initially introducing Mustangs in the Xfinity Series, the Japanese-based manufacturer of that third brand in NASCAR has announced a racing version of their new 2019 Supra, which will be introduced to the Xfinity Series next season. Maybe somebody in Japan watches In the Pits with Stock Car Scott. Nah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the new Supra will replace the car they now called the 86 because that that name just needs to be 86. And if you don't understand that old man reference, maybe you need uh, y'all need to just get smart. And if you do get the reference, you're probably saying to yourself, "He missed it by this much, 99." Let's see. So I mentioned the new Devil Car in the Xfinity series. In that series, Larson won a couple of races at uh, Chicagoland and uh, Daytona, but the most recent winner was Xfinity regular Christopher Bell, who has come up racing sprint cars like Larson and is now being groomed by Joe Gibbs Racing in their number 20. In Xfinity driver points, Elliot Sadler is now tied with another favorite Xfinity driver of mine, Daniel Hemrick. Oh, he's such a nice boy. And uh, uh, Cole Custer is uh, three points back in third. Up next, 200 laps Saturday at Loudoun, New Hampshire as the companion race to the now only Monster Energy Cup date of the year at that track. Remember that date moved to a second race at Las Vegas starting this October, I think. Uh, well, uh, Lon Loudon, Loudon was just never one of my favorite tracks, so bye. Uh, while on NASCAR, I will mention my latest successes in finding a NASCAR Authentics diecast race cars of late. On my way home from the rained out summer showdown, uh, I scored a few of the new Wave 4 of the 124th cars at uh, Lake Stevens Target. Be able to get me a new Daryl Wallace Jr. I'm really stoked about. And uh, um, I was able to uh, also find a few cars that I had missed from uh, previous Wave, Wave 3. Uh, I have also discovered that Fred Meyer is another good place to hunt for die cast. Not so much the 164th cars, uh, but they are very co competitive with the 124th scale NASCAR Authentics 
uh, having them at the same price as the other places where I shop for die cast. Recently, I was able to score all four of the first 2018 series of 124 scale cars, which included a Dale Jr. Uh, Justice League Chevrolet SS from last season, as well as the new Napa Camaro for Chase Elliott with nine as his new number, if you can see it up there. Uh, the other two cars were uh, 2018 Ford Fusions driven by Bad Brad Keselowski and Paul Menard. I'm still looking for a 124th scale Bubba Wallace in that new uh, number 43 Camaro. Mm. But the Swedish, sweetest, the sweetest find was a Casey Kane car that I found at Tumwater. Uh, Fred Meyer last week on my way down to South Sound Speedway. It was uh, one of the cars that I missed from the last wave of 2011. And there are a few more that I missed. Huh, it cost a little more at uh, Fred's place there, but it was well worth it. Now, abruptly changing subjects, I will move on to F1. Uh, they have been in Europe the past uh, three weeks and will continue there for a while. With Hamilton getting an unexpected win in France a few weeks ago, followed by Verstappen's win uh, for Red Bull at their home Grand Prix in Austria. Then Sebastian Vettel disappointed all the British fans by winning for Ferrari at Silverstone over home favorite Lewis Hamilton in his Mercedes who, despite starting on the pole, had to battle back uh, to the front after early contact with Kimi Raikkonen sent both to the back. They ended up second and third after an exciting 52 laps at one of Formula One's original venues. The next race is this weekend at Hockenheim for the Grand Prix of Germany, with Vettel leading Hamilton by eight points going into Vettel's home race. As for ARCA, I saw Michael Self win a few weeks ago, I think at Chicagoland, because it was on uh, Fox Sports 1, uh, but I have not seen uh, any races since, because I don't have MAV TV. Uh, the next ARCA race, I can watch is towards the end of this month at Pocono. Updates will follow accordingly. Last but not least is the Camping World Truck Series. Uh, since the last episode of In the Pits with me, Stock Car Scott, uh, they have raced three times on asphalt and once on dirt at Tony Stewart's Eldora Dirt Speed Palace in Ohio. Justin Haley uh, won at uh, Gateway, Illinois several weeks ago for his first truck win before running afoul of the out-of-bounds line at Daytona in the Xfinity Series race a few weeks later. Brett Moffitt won for the third time this year at Chicagoland in the underfunded number 16 Shiggy Hattori team keeping his hopes to run the full season alive as well as, <clears throat> as their playoff aspirations. Then, Ben Rhodes of Louisville, Kentucky won the truck race last week in his home state at Kentucky Speedway, punching his ticket for the playoffs. And last night was the 6th annual Dirt Derby, as it is now called. Austin Dillon, one of my favorite cup drivers now, won the first event, uh, then referred to as the Mud Summer Classic. And since then, two other cup favorites, Bubba and Larson, have also won the race, now known as the Dirt Derby, because of a trademark dispute with Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Oh, jeez. Some people just can't take a joke, right, Tony? Well, the race holds very special memory for me 
since I missed the end of the first race five years ago because I had to go to the emergency room that night due to severe abdominal and back discomfort. But I left the tape running before my, I had my wonderful wife take me to the hospital. Now, I didn't get to see who won the race for a couple of days, uh, a couple of days later, by which time I was minus one gnarly and nasty-looking gallbladder. Fun times. Last night's race was hardly that eventful for me. But it was eventful for Chase Briscoe in his F-150, who won his first truck race since his, last, his ride last year with Brad Keselowski went away when that team was disbanded. It was an interesting afternoon of qualifying heat racing and the main there on the dirt track all on Fox Sports 1. The next Camping World truck race is like ARCA at the end of the month at Pocono and also on Fox Sports 1. Well, I guess that's enough talking to make a decent episode. Hopefully not so much time will pass before I get around to producing another one of these shows, but as y'all very well know, I do this when I feel like it. Not much other stuff to try to fit into this episode, uh, but I will again continue to caution race fans against coming to the city where I uh, currently reside, simply because it's dangerous. If y'all want to visit me, please go to a local racetrack and visit me there like Kyson and uh, Kay did several weeks ago. As a big race fan, I love to talk racing, and unless I am busy capturing live racing action on video at the time, I would love to talk to anybody about racing. So come on by. Uh, hopefully, I can uh, see y'all at uh, one of the races here in the near future, because there is going to be some exciting racing coming up soon here in the Pacific Northwest. Until then, you can see me and the races I go to here on the YouTube. And I will produce another of these little shows about racing and stuff. I like to call In the Pits with me, Stock Car Scott, you know, when I feel like it. I hope everyone get it, gets out to their local track this weekend because, as you know, all races matter. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very much considering that's 23 minutes you ain't never getting back. TTFN.